Hi everyone, just a little addendum to the front of this video. The replays are now actually working, so I can actually record the footage and show an example of how I actually play the, the deck. Um, showing off, you know, my sequencing decisions and the different different times I would use the different cards and when I would choose to mulligan out or choose separate weapons or something. Just to try and show how I'm able to to take this deck all the way to 12 wins um, and even beat some of the Dark Havens that we still see running around. I, I know that there are several people even in my own lodge who are holding onto the Dark Haven deck and uh, waiting to use it later. But uh, yeah, you just uh, I hope hopefully by showing the replays I can give a good demonstration as to how I play, the decisions I make, uh, how you combat different situations and you know, respond to different, uh, you know, how you come back from behind or, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully I can get that out soon. But unfortunately, yesterday was when the replays weren't working and that's my best day for making videos. So we'll see how we go with that. But anyway, uh, I'll, until then, let's just jump into the original video that I, I made and was about to put out just before they launched the update, which seems to fix the replays. And I thought I'd better let you know. So, with that said, let's have a look. Greetings, Legionaries, and welcome to my first video for a very long time. That's not a reveal. Discussing the event run for the Knights faction release, and I've been loving this event. I'm really enjoying the new playstyle of the um, of the Knights, the the weapon system, the plasma system, the the fact every pilot is unique to the um, the actual armor itself, so they've got several different ways of being played. Um, just the strategy of trying to remove your opponent's weapons and when not to, and having to yeah plan around all these different factors that can be coming at you. Yeah, I've really been loving it, and yeah, I'm here. I've decided, hey, let's relaunch the uh, my video series with one of these. I'd love to take them on ladder as well, for that matter, but my collection's a little lackluster right now. Despite opening 10 12 win crates and 10 6 win crates, I have got a grand total of one epic card, which I got out of the shop anyway. And no legendary cards, which is actually fairly similar to how my collection with uh, uh, Caliban, the Caliban faction is going too. These ones are, once again, it's a shop, and that's the only one I've managed to get so far in several event runs. But anyway, we're talking about Knights today, or the event at least, because I do not have any of the actual Knights themselves. So let's jump over to the event. The deck we're playing with today is... Young Knight, not as powerful as Dark Haven. Uh, at the time I played these games, there are still a few Dark Havens running around on ladder, and they they are rough. That that deck is perfectly built for fighting other other knights, and so it's a fairly good idea to ban it in a uh, an event which is but just purely knight on knight combat. That deck was built to kill other knights. Um, whereas this one. It doesn't look like a good deck from the just first glance. I mean, look, it doesn't even have a this curve. That's not a curve. That's a straight line. And the there's so many singletons, so many singletons here. It's um it's really inconsistent. So this deck is all about being adaptive because you've got almost one of every single weapon. Almost. You've got the chain fist. You've got the Battle Cannon, the Shock Lance, the Flame Cannon, uh, the War Blade, the Hecaton Claw, and the Graviton Cannon. Having one of each, and two of the one you probably want least in this event, the Shock Lance, um, makes it quite an inconsistent deck um, with getting the weapons. But it also means you're very flexible because you have the card House Orlak, which lets you choose a weapon from your deck and create a copy of it. So in other words, you can get a second copy of any of these weapons, and it can hopefully be the one you need at the time, depending on the situation. And it allows that little flexibility by having the huge range of weapons. 
Your main win cons here, though, are going to be the Hecaton Claw or the Graviton Cannon. Um, the Graviton Cannon, of course, if, yeah, it's very straightforward. Pay four, deal ten. Um, that wipes off the weapons of most of your opponents. Um, if you can get a clean shot off, if if the board state is not threatening to you, and you've got ten energy and a Graviton Cannon in hand, the game is yours. You can put the Graviton Cannon on. You can take a even the biggest knights get a quarter of their life taken away in a single shot. They lose all their weapons, and you can still do a face punch as well at the end. So, yeah, Graviton Cannon, it's a finisher. It finishes the game either that turn or usually the turn after when they, they then, having no weapons themselves, struggle to remove your own, remove the Graviton Cannon off you or come back in some way. But, you know, Graviton Cannon doesn't care about blockers. It take a black hole to the face, and that's usually the end of the game. Hecaton Claw, it's a faster win con. If you can get the energy, a lot of people swear by building up energy for the Hecaton Claw, but I found that, first of all, if you don't have it available, like if you can't find it for whatever reason, you don't get the Hecaton Claw itself, or one of your ways of drawing or generating it, Tech Engineer, quite un you wouldn't rely on Tech Engineer to get the Claw out for you. Um, you could be saving up the energy for not a lot of purpose. I mean, this deck does not generate or use energy very well. The Warlord generates some for you, if you've only got a spare mana and you don't need to um, use your, your Titan by, to attack, which it often will be, I find. Um, so it's not generating a lot of energy. There's, there's only one Plasma Generator, one Patron Forge, which that comes after the Hecaton, for, the Hecaton Claw anyway, so that's not going to be helping you save up energy for a massive Hecaton swing. And um, uh, the Rocket Pod. These are the only three ways you have of, or four, I suppose, of gaining extra plasma. And uh, that's very unreliable. That's getting that's getting you one or two plasma, two or three plasma at most before it gets removed. And that one, uh, yeah, the game's pretty much over by the way I play it. Pretty much over by this by the time you get the patron forge. I think I use the Hecaton Claw to finish off a game once in the entire uh, 12, 12 win run. Spoilers. But the uh, uh, the Graviton Cannon, much better finisher in my opinion. You don't need to save up so much energy when this deck's not making a lot in the first place, and it lets you burn your energy off earlier on in the game to actually deal with threats. It can, it can stop the enemy from coming and uh, hitting you too hard in the face. Claws out there is an option, but without it, this deck doesn't burn a lot of energy. It's got a lot of cheap, um, cheap ways to spend it. So, uh, yeah, like for the most part, most part, just save for Graviton. Just if you have four around to deal ten with the Graviton, that's usually the end of the game, and uh, it's pressure opponent before them. As for the other the other parts of the deck, um, card draw, we all know that one. Uh, tech Engineer, it generates a weapon for you, and a decent two drop or curve filler, I guess. Um, it, being able to generate any of the pool of weapons, sometimes you'll get something nice like the shield, which can um, hamper... Uh, and the enemy's going for a, a combat strategy. Um, you got a bit of healing here, healing and giving your warlord frontline to protect some of the other other units if you need that. Um, or uh, as I occasionally used it, I would use this to heal up something which can protect the warlord. So um, that can that can be a factor. You got a uh, hell rider. Hell rider gives you terror. It, not so relevant since you're not going very heavy on again unless you're going you got the claw but it, I, I still think you're better off uh playing a much faster play style than trying to save up energy with for the claw um this gives you terror which it helps to a degree dealing with the opponent's troops you're not going to see a lot of troops in this event though because we are facing off against other titans uh, so the terror will just it'll save you a few HP here and there, which can be relevant. I find the, the two chain fists is much more relevant. Really, it can help you. Um, uh, it gives you a total of three, maybe four chain fists in your deck if you generate another one, 
and one an, an important thing you might not know how to play within the uh, the chain fist is you can actually equip a chain fist, pump it with the uh, the plasma, and then if you don't want if you have another weapon in your other hand you don't want to get rid of or you already have another chain fist maybe you can then equip a second chain fist on top of the first one and pump that one. You rev up the chain fists and yeah it does burn the card. But they are fairly cheap, and you will have a you will have a few of them lying around. If you ever need to punch through that extra one point of damage to to smash up a weapon or um, maybe get the terror effect, something like this, um, yeah, it's it's an option there for you. A bit of card draw. Uh, I, I don't think I ever saw any stealth, so don't don't save this for treat this as card draw. Um, Shock lands, as I said. Without seeing many troops and already having the terror ability around anyway, shock lance is not usually that useful. It'll be an extra point. It'll be an extra uh, filler weapon sometimes. It's a pity you've got two of these when you'd much rather have something else. Um, I'll talk a bit more weapons in a second. Let's deal with the other stuff first. Uh, household guard. Yeah, it's a front line. If the enemy doesn't deal with it, you can sit there and uh, and continue to pump it up. For a single point of energy a turn, it I did that once or twice, and it gets dangerous over time. The enemy uh, will regret if they let it sit around, and you've got nothing else better to do with your energy. It'll it'll grow and eventually become quite a big threat, and it protects you from combat yourself. Um, these are fun. Uh, they will die to a battle cannon, so don't uh, don't involve them too heavily in your strategy, but. It, it can be a nice little deal two damage and draw fire for a turn. Uh, rocket pod. Again, you're not going to see a lot of troops around, and for five, like flame cannon has the same effect, basically, and it's only four. So the rocket pod is like if you've already got your flame cannon and battle cannon equipped or something, and you need some extra damage, that's when it comes into play. But a little, little pricey, and you'll very rarely get the one energy... Uh, one plasma effect. Um, eh, and then you've got a few front lines here. The Ogren, again, not a lot of stealth around, so don't bother saving this for stealth. If you need a front line, put him down. And the Ogren, of course, great front line here, particularly if, you, uh, if you're punching with your, your knight in the first place, then uh, you, will, you will come down immediately as a 5-6 and will very quickly go up from there. The enemy will often... Uh, dish a few attacks onto your Warlord, and even if they don't want to, that will be pumping the Ogrim. Uh, ah, these the Mortar Carriers. Um, a great addition to any deck, and no different here. The fact they can just drop um, a, a 3 damage shell on any random target is very good when there's often you're often facing against an opponent who's only got one target to hit, which is their Knight, of course. We, we're all, all playing very troop light decks here so often the mortar carrier is just a guaranteed three damage to the enemy warlord and then it sits around demanding to be removed uh so yeah this is um quite good for um a big threat to distract the opponent even it might not be a front line but you often find that it basically will draw enough fire to to um act as a basically having a front line uh, the Forge uh, comes in a bit late. Like, we, uh, in the games I'll be showing you, we'll be going quite fast. Quite fast. I'm usually winning around about turn 10, 11, something like this. Either with or with the Graviton Cannon or similar. It doesn't go long past then. And, yeah, the Forge is usually coming in. Maybe it's some, if you've got nothing else to play, it can help boost a bit of energy for making sure you can pay for the Graviton Cannon. I don't think I ever used to make a weapon. Um, not to say, like, if you're, if the game is going long, you're both exhausted on cards. This will be a good way to, for you to have an advantage. Basically, you're creating, creating random weapons and stopping your hand running dry. So you know, it'd be a bit of an energy sink in that case. But I don't think I ever used it. Uh, Doombringer, not fantastic here with these like, dealing all two to all. Because again, we don't have a lot of a lot of enemies to a lot of troops to be facing here, but it is still two damage guaranteed onto the warlord, which can 
often you can if you can do your calculations right you can factor that in to make sure it rips off a weapon or something or um, finishes off and again it's, it's a threat that has to be removed sadly it's very vulnerable to the the las cannon which uh, if the enemy's playing ahead of you if they're playing first uh, they will get to put their las cannon on turn eight and blow you away with the uh, blow your doombringer away and also deal five to your warlord at the same time so it's vulnerable to this but almost every game i played it it, it had a big effect on the board and uh, of course graviton can discussed it finishes games for you the other weapon combos uh will be the main meat and bones of the deck where you'll be using the um the ideal is to get the battle cannon and flame cannon to really control the board and even control the opponent's um weapons which is quite important keeping keeping their strong weapons off them so they don't they don't have um a way to to control your own board is a um, like as i said secretary very vulnerable to a battle cannon but if you can clean the battle cannons off and they don't have a replacement then yeah they they will sit around and they will build up their value um so yeah, flame cannon battle cannon perfect combination it can deal with in a single turn deal with five health troops and uh, even more after that because you can continue to burn away and Yes, it's quite quite an effective combination, and it's really how this warlord should be playing because his ability doesn't allow it to act again. So when he acts, he's going to earn two energy, two plasma, and then that's it. He can't he can't face punch after this. So he's not very good with the, the combat weapons like the chain fists and the shock lances, and uh, I, I don't think I ever had I ever felt like the tempest war blade was what I wanted to be doing. So, uh, yeah, he really, he really wants to be sitting back and firing battle cannons and flame cannons and uh, graviton cannons. The combat role is is an option in this deck because you have, you have the good combat weapons here. But it's an it's like a, an emergency. It's not, it's not. It doesn't want to be a main game plan um so yeah apart from apart from the the main combo of the battle cannon flame cannon you would do also have the chain fists um and the shock lances and even the war blade although as i said it's a bit pricey for six at that point at that point you want to be putting down a mortar carrier or even a, a front line or oh i guess i forgot to mention corrupt usurpation 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 I know how to say that word. Why can't I do it? Anyway, um, treat this mostly as just removal to get rid of a blocker or something to finish the game. That's typically how I used it. Occasionally, the enemy will put down a, a blocker and go, "Ah, good, you can't, you can't finish me this turn. I've got a blocker." And, yeah, no, it's mine. Um, I think it's basically the only times I used it. Again, not a lot of troops here. Not a lot of troops you need to take away with this. Um, it, it could be nice that it comes back to your hand in some circumstances, but typically uh, paying six to destroy a troop is enough to, if that's enough to finish a game, that's what it's there for, I believe. Oh, and uh, how do I forget this guy? House Macabius. That's another reason this deck's quite strong, I think. If you have a House Macabius, it's basically a free card, because it draws you a new card, to gain four attack, four energy which is really strong that can help that boosts you immediately up to six and that allows you to delete a lot of threatening troops like maybe ogrens um if you've got the held rider on in particular it means the ogrens like the uh the ogrens won't do any damage back to you it can take care of um yeah if you consider uh maybe you have your two chain fists or chain fist shock lance something you can boost your attack up to four and then put down House Macabius, boost it up to eight, and then you've immediately destroyed your opponent's battle cannon and flame cannon that they they put on and they were very proud of and they thought that they you wouldn't be able to touch it in a single turn. They had time to nope, it's gone, and that's uh, that's really strong. You've um, you've removed two of their powerful weapons and you know, or graviton cannon, other all these other weapons and stuff that can just be deleted in one turn. 
um, by by this attack, and it leaves it leaves you with plus four attack for your next turn too. So the enemy probably is going to leave you alone in terms of combat for a turn, because you'll be sitting on you know six seven attack, and they don't want to fight into that. So yeah, that's another reason that makes this deck really good. It's it's flexible, and if you think make careful choices about what you're playing then it will pay off for you and it's got the a few of the strong cards here that really um, make it work even though it doesn't look like it should the graviton cannon is a good hint though that is, this deck will work so that said let's jump into the games and see how we play this one all right let's start off with uh with the beginning beginning of the event. Let's go! And that's what we'll be doing today. Yes, I was afraid of this. Been having a bug where event games are not working for me recently. I don't know why. They just they are not working. Uh, if I try and load the replays, they refuse to play. We have to quit out. It just hangs at that screen. It loads the game, hangs at that screen, and then we sit around and wait. If we had the music turned on, which I don't want to because it's um, it sometimes gets hit with copyright from some jerk who decided to copyright what's essentially free music to use. Um, yes, no event deck will like anything else. Any of the other so the decks work is fine. Is that the replays? Mm, all right, you're gonna make a liar of me, are you? Okay, none of my event, none of my games are replaying right now. So that's why I did such an extended intro to hopefully uh, give you guys an idea of what you should be playing. Um, while we're sitting around here doing nothing, there were a few reasons I wanted to show off the event games. I want to show you some of the mistakes I see a lot of people making. For starters, guys, if you're playing second, the counter-attack is really good for the knights. It's a heal, which heals your weapons too, which can bring them out of uh, a threat range. Say your opponent's got a battle cannon and a chain fist, so he can potentially, from his knight alone, deal six to you in a turn. And that can, if you've got a weapon sitting on six health, that destroys a weapon, right? But if you play, if you play the counter attack, then he has to come up with one more point of damage. Maybe he can't. Maybe he can. Either way, he's got to do something else to to take that weapon off you. It can, and then maybe you've got to heal the turn after. So for for no energy at all, you can heal one point to your weapons, which is very very relevant. It could, it's kind of like no energy to heal up to three and gain a point of plasma. It's The plasma can be gained any time, but th that heal is very important. Stop playing it on turn one. I see so many players who... Um, may, I, my turn one is usually build a bit of energy and uh, draw a weapon out of my deck if I've got the card for it. And I don't, not usually attacking, but sometimes the opponent will attack me first first turn, and then immediately heal one, and they have no weapons. They've got no reason to heal. All they've done is just heal one, they've dealt, they've spent zero energy to deal one point of damage to me, essentially. But that's, it's so much more effective to play it at a time when you want to be trying to save a weapon from being destroyed. It's maddening <laughs> every time I see it, like, no, stop it! Stop doing this. I know it's free. Doesn't mean you have to play it now. You still got another five more turns before your hand is full. Don't do it. Don't do it. I will. I will shout at anyone who I see doing on a ladder, and you won't hear me because it's a long way away. But you will be being shouted at. All right. So that's the main one. Um. Anything else I can think of right now? Oh. Um. Equip your weapon. You equip your ranged weapons after you make attacks. Uh, still, I've done it a few times myself when I'm in a bit of a rush. Sometimes I see people not being pressed for time and still 
rushing in, putting on a battle cannon, and then face punching with their chain fist. Then the battle cannon loses two integrity as well. So yeah, you you wasted a bit of integrity for no real reason there. Uh, you could have you could have equipped it second after you've made your attack, and it remains an eight health until my turn, uh, making it much harder to destroy. So um, I, that's the main ones I can think of right now. If I ever get these replays going, I'm I'm going to try and upload them. But if not, um, I will try to come up with some more hints and put them somewhere else. Because um, it's a new faction, I get it. There's People are still learning how to play it, but here's some good good first pointers. Don't waste your counter-attack. It can be really helpful because, uh, obviously, it's going second. Big disadvantage. Turn it into an advantage. Find a time when your weapons are most threatened and then use it then. When you're most like, I think I'm going to lose a weapon here, but it's on the cusp. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Then you play it, and then they've got a bit, they got to spend a bit more effort to try and take it off you. Um, obviously, don't also play it when your weapons are on one health because there's no way you're saving them that time. Play it when they've, play it when they're sitting on like four or five health, six, seven, something like this. Get them a bit more of an edge. In survivability. Anyway, so we're going to leave it there. Um, hopefully they fix this bug, because I had it last event too. I was, again, that was going to be my first one. I was going to do a Defenders of Caliban event run. Um, we did uh, we did some Cypher. Some Cypher. I was finding Cypher really strong, and not a lot of people seemed to be following along, but we were, we were nuking people with Cypher. It was great. And I was really keen on putting that one out, but not... Uh, not able to show the replays. And it got fixed when they launched Knights. And then I was going to do a deck about, a, um, uh, a video about the deck Dark Haven, because like, wow, this deck's really strong. I, I gotta tell people. And as I'm recording those replays, which were working fine, they banned it as I was recording. So great, fantastic. Um, All right, let's try a new deck. Oh, look, I found another one. It's great. It's doing really well. Another 12 wins. And uh, yes, now we've gone back to it not working again. So it doesn't work on phone. doesn't work on Steam. Is anyone else having this problem? Let me know if you are. I'd like to, like to share that with the devs as well because I've I already called them on my hotline, but obviously it's a bit hard to get a, a quick response at this time when they're launching all their, their new expansions and stuff. The hardest time to get hold of them. So, um, in fact, actually, let's show, let's close off this video. I'm going to restart and show you the, hello. Someone's awake, are we? Hi, buddy. Yes, you're awake. You're awake, what's up? Can you say hello, everybody? Can you say, greetings, legionnaires. You can, can you? Are you going to say it? Oh. Greetings. A bit sleepy still. Okay. Do you want to open some boxes? Boxes. Okay, ready. Oh, shiny. Oh, is that some fire? Ah, uh, look at that. Look at that. We get, an, we get a rare. Finally get another rare. And it's another one of these. The only one I have. This is the only one I have. We've got another one. Wow, we've got a lot of friends coming around, haven't we? Hey, we got a legendary, and it's one completely different faction. The cats, everyone's calling me right now. It's Not so fast. almost as like they knew it was a good time to interrupt. Hey, we got a green. That's not what we want, though. We want a yellow, don't we? Oh, some fire. Yellow fire. This is what's this green fire? Is it? You no match for me. What color fire do you want? There's a yellow fire again for the wrong faction. It and then we've already owned. Yes, it's kind of like fireworks, isn't it? 
I'm just stupid. What's this color? Yeah, green fast. We don't want to see green, we want to see orange, we want to see yellow. In in my last event run, Rowan, in the 10 wins I got, I got four yellows. Four yellows, not one of them for the team I want. There's another one! There's three in these 10 already! What's going on here? Ah. Daddy got a ha Daddy got a funny face, has he? Ah, uh, the green, but an orange and yellow. Ah, another one's five. Is it five or four? I, I'm losing track, but still, it's so many. Daddy cattle. I'm not actually angry, Rowan. That one's red. Okay. Are you, Daddy, would. Well, you won't see Daddy's surprise face, do you? Well, if I get a yellow, I'll be surprised. If I get anything which isn't green, I'll be surprised. The only orange I've got so far is one I've only one I've already got. By the Empress Throne. It's <laughs> green so much. I know it's green so much. It's the last chance. Come on. One. Ooh, what's that one? What's this thing? Orange. Orange fire. And what's this one? The plane. Ready? Ah, it's a green. We don't want green, do we? We want orange and yellow. Oh, what's this? It's a robot. Oh. It's a fire robot. Do you like the fire robot? What's the robot fixing? It's fixing the lights. Oh, wow. That sounds good, doesn't it? Well, there we go, everybody. That was, uh... Interesting, wasn't it? Train. What's the train? Where's the train? Oh, it's up here. Is it? You think it's the train? Is it? Yeah, that's my. That's the two. Um, the two factions win ratio. But right now it's showing. It's bugged out again. It's showing just even. It should be showing. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Not. Not. Oh, yeah, it looks like Earth, doesn't it? Does it look like Earth? Look like Earth? What's this line around? Does that make it look a bit like Saturn? No, Saturn. This is Earth. Oh. It's spinning around here. Oh, it's spinning around. It's, okay, that's the line for spinning around, is it? Is it right? It's not Saturn, it's Earth. Uh, up here. More trains here. It's more trains here, yeah. The one train? Oh, you mean these ones? You think is that train tracks? Train tracks. Train tracks. Ah. Well, when I talk to the devs about the uh, the event run, I'll see if they can get that fixed. See if they can get the um, uh, the replays fixed. So you can see some of the really cool games. At the this one, I really unset. I couldn't show you. This one was against a dark haven, and we pulled this one off by the skin of our teeth. But there's actually a few dark haven, a few people still running around with dark haven. Say, yeah, there was some fire, wasn't there? I'll show you the fire in a second. A few people still running around with dark haven, and we still smashed them. So that's that shows the like a circle. I think this was maybe a one of these around here was another dark haven deck, the uh, Therastus Orlock. I'm pretty sure these ones here were all Dark Haven. I think people still are using their Dark Haven so, deck here. <laughs> orange circle. Orange, orange circle. Oh, you mean this one? What's this thing? Earth. It's like an Earth, isn't it? It's like an orange Earth. What happened to all the water? Is the water gone? Oh, and what's this thing here? Another robot. So many robots today, aren't there? Yeah. Okay. Well, with uh, with that, I guess we will continue on another day. Hopefully, with some more actual content to show you then. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, discussion.
Two, oh, oh, it's two. He has two Rowans. Rowan, Rowan. Ah, oh, that is that. That's the word for. You. That's a letter for your name, isn't it? Two Rowans. Wow, aren't you lucky? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So say bye bye, everybody. <laughs> Fireworks and everything, aren't they? You gonna say goodbye? Big fireworks. Ah, you're, you're loving these pictures, aren't you? You don't get to see them very often. Right? Oh, do you mean these ones? These ones, yeah. There's other fire. Oh, there's fireworks in the fire too. Look at that. All right. Say so, bye bye, everybody. Are you gonna say bye bye, everybody? Oh, okay. See you later, everyone. I'll catch you in the game.